world history has been flooded by two different types of people, the heroes and the villains, just like in movies. Oftentimes, those villains get more attention and the memories on how they put other people into hell throughout their lifetime become a shadow following each generation time after time. History shows that there were no drug lords even a century ago, which proves they are not a historical commodity. In just a century, they have made their way to the top. Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo, commonly known as El Petrino, or Godfather, was one of the first drug lords operating from Colombia to the United States. At his peak, he controlled nearly the entire illegal drug trade in Mexico and earned billions of dollars in revenue in the 1970s. It will catch you by no surprise that he ended like other major drug lords eventually arrested, put in prison, and convicted. However, today's focus is on the current drug dealing situation rather than history. There is one special class of these villains that have engulfed the world like a never-ending abyss through their illicit drug empires. To name some, Pablo Escobar and El Chapo and a handful of others are known for their brutality and ruthlessness. Some of these unforgettable names are still active nowadays. Join me as we transverse into their worlds and how each of them spend their lives recently. Let's begin our countdown. Number 8. Yulin Adonai Archaga Karius He is the leader of the violent MS-13 transnational criminal organization. He has been added to the FBI's 10 most wanted fugitives in Honduras. The FBI is offering a reward of up to $100,000 for information leading directly to his arrest. Alexander Mendoza, or Porky, also known as Archega Carius, has been charged in the Southern District of New York with racketeering conspiracy, possession of machine guns, and cocaine importation. He is also allegedly responsible for ordering and participating in the murder of several rival gang members and other individuals associated with MS-13. In August 2018, a Honduran tribunal convicted Archega Carius and sentenced him to a lengthy imprisonment. Approximately 20 armed gunmen in police and military uniforms stormed the courthouse where Archega Carius was scheduled to appear in February 2020 and violently escaped. Multiple Honduran police officers lost their lives during the breakout. Yulin Adonai Archega Carius, aka Porky, is believed to still be in Honduras. Number 7. Kenny Jing Ang Chen. Not much has been said about this rising drug lord. He made it clear that any information about him will be hidden unlike most of the other kingpins. He definitely knows how to hide well. It is not only Ang Chen's prolific distribution of heroin that makes him wanted, but also the despicable act of involving minors in his illegal enterprise. Everyone is waiting for the day that Ang Chen would face the fruits of all his wrongdoings. Number 6. Ramel Pascua Cipriano Most drug lords came from Central and Southern America, associated with drug cartels distributing drugs into the United States. But Cipriano is actually a 23-year-old Asian whose last known address was in California. He is a key member of the Sinaloa Cartel for Unleashing Havoc in Mexico, an extremely dangerous drug cartel which directly caused the deaths of thousands of people. Having been linked to this cartel means Cipriano is extremely dangerous too. There is not much record about him aside from being a fugitive. Number 5. Ismael Zambada Garcia This legendary drug lord has been in the business since the era of Pablo Escobar and El Chapo. Now this old kingpin is continuously hiding to evade authorities. Zambada is now 72 years old and still heading the Sinaloa cartel. He is commonly known as El Mayo. He was a farmer in his early years and gradually entered the illegal drug trade, smuggling small amounts. Miguel Angel Felix Gagliardo led El Mayo along with others and founded the Sinaloa cartel. As a result of Mexico's drug war in 2006, El Mayo's rivals, the Tijuana cartel, were forced to deal with government pressure, 
allowing Zambada to grow significantly. This led to a major Mexican drug war which caused a lot of death and misery in Mexico. Though El Mayo had been chased by the government since 1998, he always managed to evade the arrests while heading the Sinaloa cartel with El Chapo. After El Chapo's arrest, he took full control of the cartel and became the force behind the release of El Chapo's son. Number 4. Dario Antonio Usaga David Having an own page on the website of the U.S. State Department means two things. One, if you did something really great, or two, you did something really wrong. And guess what? Usaga falls under the latter category. He is from the home of the biggest drug cartel leaders, Colombia. He is currently leading the Los Urbanos or Autodefensas Gaitanitas de Colombia, a heavily armed, extremely violent criminal organization. It uses violence and intimidation to control narcotics trafficking routes, cocaine processing laboratories, speedboat departure points, and clandestine landing strips as part of Colombia's peace and justice program. The organization operates in 13 of Colombia's 32 departments, most of which are in the northwestern part of the country. Homicides increased by 443% over two years as a result of turf wars with rival criminal organizations for drug trafficking routes. Usuga was indicted by the Southern District of New York in 2009. The U.S. Department of State is currently offering a reward of up to $5 million for information leading to the arrest and or conviction of Dario Antonio Usaga David. Number 3. Jesus Alfredo Guzman Salazar He is a high-ranking member of the Sinaloa Cartel and the son of former Sinaloa Cartel leader Joaquin Guzman Loria. Along with his brother Ivan Archivaldo Guzman Salazar and his father Guzman Salazar was accused of coordinating the transport of narcotics into the U.S., distributing drugs to wholesale customers, and collecting drug proceeds for transfer to Mexico for the benefit of the Sinaloa cartel. These proceeds usually are being used to obtain guns and weapons, bribing corrupt public officials, engaging in violence and threats, kidnapping, drug trafficking, and a handful more of illegal activities. After the arrest and subsequent extradition and conviction of their father in the Eastern District of New York, the Guzman Salazar brothers grew in power within the Sinaloa cartel, expanding their enterprise with sophisticated fentanyl laboratories in Culiacan, Mexico. They also utilize maritime and air transportation in addition to tunnels and border crossings. In 2009 and 2016, Federal grand juries in the Northern District of Illinois returned superseding indictments charging the brothers of co-conspirators with violations to possess and distribute cocaine and heroin. A reward of up to $5 million is being offered by the U.S. Department of State for information leading to Jesus Alfredo Guzman Salazar's arrest and or conviction. Number 2. Julio Alex Diaz may be one of the most wanted drug lords by the DEA in 2020. Also known as Julio Menon, he has been involved in various criminal acts other than the drugs. According to information issued by the DEA, Diaz is wanted on conspiracy to possess heroin, fentanyl, and cocaine with the intention of trafficking. He allegedly escaped several federal operations to apprehend him in New England in 2016. Number 1. Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes Top on our list and known as El Mincho, the head of the Jalisco New Generation Cartel. He is the biggest target currently for both Mexico and the U.S. with the latter offering over $10 million for any information which can lead to his arrest. After illegally immigrating to the U.S. and being deported, he started working for the Millennial Cartel. After his bosses were killed or arrested, he founded his own cartel. He is one of the most violent drug lords in the world with such violent acts directed towards both rival cartels and even Mexican security forces. He is said to be hiding in Mexico with mercenaries guarding him. 
The big names associated with these drug lords are and will always be remembered, even until they are all six feet under the ground. Having such popularity can really be a grace or disgrace. What do you think? Let us know.